morning devotions. I am Brother Freeman and I'm truly happy that you've joined us today. Let us pray over our time together. Father, we are so grateful and thankful for your love and your mercy. We're thankful for allowing us to see another day. Lord, we know that you're working things out for our good and for your glory behind the scenes. Help us to be patient. Help us to be still as you intercede and work for us. In Jesus' name, amen. The title of our time together is, Who is Our God? We'll be looking at Daniel chapter 1 and 2. Growing up with both parents and nine other siblings and numerous visitors in and out of our home, you learn very quickly that there's an order of things in life. In our home, there's an order for mealtime, bath time, even television time. And being the lowest in ranking order, I had to do a lot of waiting for my time. It was during these moments of waiting for my turn to take a bath, watch television, I decided to read the two wall plaques that hung in my parents' living room. One was about the poem Footprints in the Sand. The other was Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus Christ is saying yesterday, today, and forever. I read these plaques so many times that I memorized them and eventually understood what they meant. Hebrews 13, 8 taught me that the God of the Bible does not change. He will remain the same every day and forever. But the sad thing was, I didn't quite understand the magnitude of this verse, Hebrews 13, 8. It would be years later that I would begin to understand just who our God is. In today's time, we look at God through the eyes of Daniel, Hananiah, Mishaiah, and Azariah to get a better understanding of who he is in our everyday life. After all, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He never changes. Before we even begin in Daniel chapter 1 and 2, let's quickly mention some of the attributes or the characteristics of our God. He is self-existing without origin. He never changes. He has no needs. He's all-powerful, all-knowing, always everywhere, full of perfect and changing wisdom. He's true. He's kind and full of goodwill. He's right and perfect in all that he does. He's passionate and kind. He's inclined to spare the guilty. He loves us. He's perfect and he's beautiful and great. This same God is a God of Daniel and the three Hebrew men. And he's also your God if you know him as Lord and Savior. Furthermore, Daniel chapter 1 and 2 helps us to see God on a more personal and intimate level. Just imagine that the God with all those awesome attributes cares for you and me on an intimate level. During the third year of King Jehoiakim's reign in Judea, King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon came to Jerusalem to besiege it, and he had taken the Jews captive, which included Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Today we will see how our unchanging God kept them through these difficult times, and he can do the same for us. Who is our God? The first point We'll see in Daniel chapter 1, verse 2. God is the one who's in charge of everything. 
He's omniscient. He's omnipotent. He's omnipresent. He gives the victory to leaders. He appoints them. We also see that he allows and permits leaders to act. That's in Daniel chapter 1, verse 2. In our limited eyesight, we only see the actions of men. However, ultimately, God is in control and he works things out for our good and his glory. We merely have to trust him knowing that he is in control. Our second point is God is the one who allows our leaders to show favor on his children. And that's in Daniel chapter 1, verse 8 and 9. No matter how wicked you may think your boss may be or your government leaders may be, remember they are still subjected to the power of God and God's in control. He is faithful, he's loving, he's gracious, he's just, and he's wise. That's who's in control. There's so much in this passage, but there's just a few things I want to mention that would help us to live as Christians, to live a life that's honoring to God and see the benefits of that. One, Daniel and the three men lived above reproach. They didn't live like everyone else lived, accepting what was wrong in the sight of God. They also didn't rebel against the authority that God had placed over them. They sought permission from their leaders to change their diet. Leaders will respect you when they see your pattern of living is different. Leaders will also have affection and care for you when they see that your pattern of life is different and you're living a life above reproach. Do you want God to bless you? Do right toward your authority. Hebrews 13, 17. All of our favor comes from God. Our third point today is God is the one who blesses his children in spite of their circumstances. And we see this in Daniel chapter 1, verse 15 through 18. In spite of their dietary restrictions and the fact that they lived in a strange land, God was still working in them and through them. God gave them better physical and mental abilities than all their competition. The world will not understand how you are thriving under your pressure, how you are thriving with so little means, how obstacles are being moved for you. But it's the God that you serve. He makes the way out of no way. He takes your little and makes it much, enough that you're able to share it. We see this principle in 2 Corinthians 12, 9 and 10. We see this in the life of Samson, in the lad and his lunch, and the widow and her son, where God takes little and makes it much. Our fourth and final point is, in the end, God and God alone deserves and receives the glory and praise. In, Se in Daniel chapter 2, verses 19 through 27, Daniel gives God the praise. After all, had prepared to be lost, God gave the answer to Daniel and the four Hebrew men's prayer, and their lives were saved. There are people out there who do not know the God that holds the answers. You may have to intercede for them. However, after everything has worked out, remember, the glory belongs to God. Daniel and those four Hebrew men recognize that they could find the answer in God. They prayed to God. God answered their prayers and they were delivered. Who's our God today? Our God is the one who's in charge. Who's our God today? He is the one who allows our leaders to show favor over us. Who's our God today? He blesses. He is the one who blesses us in spite of our circumstances. Who is our God today? Our God is the one who alone deserves and receives the glory and praise after you've received your deliverance. This is our God. We've only looked at a glimpse of who God is. But as you move throughout this day, may you remember that you serve an awesome God and he's on your side. Let us pray. Father, we are so thankful today for allowing us to see through your word just who you are. And you desire and in your all of your might, you desire and all of your glory, you desire a sweet and awesome relationship with us. Help us to draw closer to you, Lord, as we go through this day. In Jesus' name, amen. You are not a God created by human hands. You are not a God dependent on any mortal man. You are 
You're not a God in need of anything we can give by your plan. That's just the way it is. That's what you are